Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and first off I just want to apologize for the road noises because I have my window open, it's freaking hot here, I can't cope with the weather. But basically today I'm skipping out on posting some of my Japan vlog videos to talk about something that I have been absolutely loving for I think for the past month past two months, I think. As you've seen from the title of the video, I'm going to be talking about Hana no Chihari or the season two of Hana Yori Dango, um, which is kind of weird calling it season two because um, if you've seen the J-drama, then you would know that there's Hana Yori Dango 1, then Hana Yori Dango 2, and then Hana Yori Dango the movie or Hana Yori Dango final. And then calling it season two is just kind of weird. So let's just call it Hana Hare, Hana no Chi, or whatever I say in this video. As and treat it as what it is, a sequel to Hanadan. So, first things first, as a fan of, a, of J-dramas in general, I'm basically crazy about it as much as other people are crazy about K-drama. And I, this hasn't really gone into my radar because I think that for the longest time I have been stuck with like the old generation artists or the ones who have sparked their popularity back in like the early 2000s they have been the ones that i have been following for quite some time now and because of that you know they sort of like aged into a different genre more mature roles and so like teen-ish or teen romances or something like that or very like shoujo based things i haven't been able to like focus on for like the past couple of years and i think like animes are much more easier to watch for me given the schedule because we know that um dramas they take about like an hour's worth of episodes sometimes so it's hard to like marathon usually so animes are much shorter and because of that i have been watching re-watching some of the shows that i have loved before and then new animes but for this one i just found it from like this Facebook page that I have been following and I was surprised when I saw the Eituku uniform I was like, wait, 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 what's going on? Because um, I, cause from what I know, Taiwan is doing a reboot of Meteor Garden so I thought this was the same thing and I'm sort of iffy considering how like in the first run of Hane Yoridango it was really good um, but it was the old kind of like J-drama where everything is just exaggerated, comical, and just something like that. But for this one, when I saw the concept, that's when I started researching and found out that it was actually a sequel. So this happened 10 years later after F4 graduated from the school. And so it got me really excited and yeah, I just really, really loved it. The like when I saw the first episode, I didn't talk about it in this video. There are eight episodes so far. Only four episodes are um, subbed in English and then the others are not yet. Episode eight just aired last night as I'm making this video. So um, I decided to recap it for everybody who's been sort of like confused as to what's happening, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, if you haven't seen manga. Now I will be talking about a lot of spoilers, so if you're not fond of that or if you have like seen just a couple of episodes, then you might just want to like stop at certain points in the video. But if you're in it for the full ride, then let's do this. Now as you know, like now the thing is I've never really planned on making this video, but because of how in love I am with the show right now decided to do this and maybe sort of like periodically do this as the episodes go along but we sort of have a bulk to talk about so it's gonna go right into it even if I'm five minutes in into filming and I haven't really talked about it yet so <laughs> um, but yeah first things first um, as I mentioned earlier I thought it was gonna go into that cliche of how sequels are where they're going to try to keep on like nodding towards the original just to give you some sort of like nostalgia or anything like that but this has exceeded my expectations so far. Now after watching episode 1, I decided to read the manga and I have been updated since the last chapter that was published. and. Um, needless to say that because of that, it sort of gave me an idea, even if there were no like English 
subs in some next episodes. Um, I just relied on the comprehension that I got from knowing a bit of like Japanese words and at the same time what's happening on the screen. Um, now to recap everything, let's start with episode one. And I want to say that this, you know, you know how a, a series is good if in the first episode it immediately makes you want to watch more. And this is what episode one did to me. Um, I never really liked Otto initially when I found out that you know she was pretending to be someone who's still rich who still goes to Eitoku. I thought at first that that was the entire point like she Eitoku was the one thing in her life that is still reminiscent of what's going on in her past life and so that's why she keeps on pretending and I never really liked pretentious um, protagonists but then when I discovered through the course of the story that there's more to it as to why she's in the school um, and she there are more realistic like um, notions inside her head as to you know what Eituko is and how how what happened to her changed her as a person I became to like love her more as a character um, then let's move on to C5 which at first I thought it was really really tacky like the name itself correct 5 C5 it was obviously like a nod to F4 but at least now it sort of makes sense that you know they are correct five as compared to like flower four which is like what the heck is going on there but um for this one i feel like you know with c5's reign although it's still a bit of like unfair in a way for them to be condemning students just because in a just because sort of manner at least now they sort of have a baseline as to why they are doing it they wanted to keep the prestige of the school therefore if you're not paying your tuition or you're not giving in donations then might as well withdraw but the good thing here is that the violence of the nonsense violence rather that was happening during F4's time isn't present you know it's not there anymore so it's not really played up bullying it's basically just here's your duty your school you're not doing it even if it's a pathetic way of sort of like doing things and just asking someone to drop not giving him a chance or something at least it's much more like balanced as compared to what was happening during the F4's reign um, in the school and so I like that concept um, and <laughs> another thing that I absolutely love is that um, the main lead Kagoragi Haruto I I'm, I really like the way that they didn't make them into just new versions of Domyoji and Makino. They're not the fighters. They're it's just crazy because he has a lot of insecurities. He's actually a good person. It's just that he's trying to put up a front that he's this cool, collected um, sort of guy, but in a way he's really not. Um, not in a way that Domyoji before, he was problematic, he, he has his own childish tendencies, but at the same time, he's perfect at everything. He's, he's good at fighting, um, he has his looks, he has he's rich and everything, and a lot of people did like him, as compared to Haruto, where he was really trying so hard to just put on the front because he has a, a purpose for he has this vision for the school and behind that he has this weird sort of like obsession with lucky trinkets so and he, do, he doesn't even know how to fight which is super cool like it was just by chance that he happened to like beat up the guys who was attacking this school so I think that made it uh, that made it amazing for me in a way that we have this obviously flawed character but not in a way that you know he's male lead material but he is someone who is silly and he is someone who is adorable in a way and it doesn't make him perfect and he's striving to be perfect but he is okay in his own way um, which I absolutely love the very reason why moving to my next point I am not a fan of the second lead, Hase Denma. Now, 
Hase Tenma is a typical character which, you know, people, reason why people have second lead syndrome, very much like Hanazawa Ruby in the first hand in Hanayori Dango. Because there's this, you know, um, calm, collected character who is perfect, who is just great and amazing. However, in this case, like, I think they perfected the second lead character so much to the point that he, he, he becomes the first lead brooding character trope thing for me. Like, I've never really liked perfect characters in a way. And the thing is, he isn't through and through. He is a through and through good guy. He isn't just putting up a front of being good. He, he's just good. So I understand why a lot of people really want, really are on Team Tenma, but at the same time, it's not for me. Um, and I have experienced secondhand, uh, sec and I have experienced second lead syndrome before, but it only happens for me if the first lead doesn't really deserve it, in a way. Um, if the first lead is this brooding, boring, mysterious character, which is very often present in a lot of like J-dramas and K-dramas. Um, so if the first lead is like that, most likely I'll have second lead syndrome. But then in this case, because the male lead has more dimension and more character than the second lead, then I prefer the first lead. Team Haruto, all the way. Uh, okay, so I think that's that for for like the first couple of episodes in terms of character analysis. Some of the main characters. Some of the char now one character that I absolutely love is actually Kondo-san, which is the colleague in the family mart, um, in the family in in, in all those part time in family mart because she as um as compared to like the co work as compared to like Chukushi's co workers in the Dango shop in Hanayori Dango, Kondo-san really presents this sort of like quirky older sister character which um, and in a way you know in general Hana no Chihari I think is more into the realistic um, is, is done in a way that is much more realistic the characters are thinking much more realistically even the scenes and the sequences as compared to like Hana Yoridango which I think is the formula for early 2000s J-drama where everything is exaggerated everything is very theatrical in a way as compared to this one where the characters are acting very human-like like there are just a couple of scenes that are exaggerated and they made it into a way that it's hard of those imagination you know so people are acting as as people which i absolutely love just at the accuracy as to how they're copying the manga in a way they just tweak a couple of scenes here and there but you know it's it's still the same um like the the cowboy costume is there um the, the pancake stuff they even put in my favorite part from the manga which is a pop 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 and then and then Otto thought that Haruto was asking for panties it was really really funny and I'm glad that they added that into the series and the Bisu Garden place it was a nod to the original it became their sort of like sacred place for this season I noticed that they have reused and exhausted the location so many times and I'm so happy about that because I have just been there recently um, so um, I was basking in the glory of the cast while I was there but besides the point um, I do think that in episode 2 Haruto doesn't know how to express his, his his feelings nicely to Otto or what he's thinking. Um, you, you you see him catching himself inside his head that you know I should stop talking, but then him sp speaking to her in that way sort of like delivered and spoke the greater truth to her as well as to him that you know Otto knows she's living a pathetic life, but it's she's doing it for her family not just because she's she's doing it to be a gold digger or something like that like they she he spoke something that she already knew about himself but hasn't 
been able to talk to anyone about it and that happened with him too it's like both of them are trying to reach for a standard to be perfect even when they're not which shows their dynamic as the two leads as to why i think i ship them better than and my auto's dynamic because she's she's just trying to keep up with him um and so yeah um now for episode three we get introduced into a more um into a more complex relationship between auto tenma and um kaguragi um, because of what Iri did. Now, Iri, I absolutely love the girl who is playing her. She's so, she's very much like the Bishojo that was, um, um, per, that was drawn in the manga. She's really pretty, but then when she gets so angry, she looks so evil, which is super nice. Typical, you know, tsundere character. Um, and I think like for episode three, especially with uh, with Hanazawa Ruby um, showing up and breaking Twitter Japan again, um, I do think that it, it shows us a contrast between Tenma's perfection versus Haruto's realism as a character. And I like the way that, you know, for the first um, commoner double date that Haruto and Otto went to, it wasn't the typical, it wasn't like the one in Hanayori Dango where the boyfriend was an asshole. And, you know, here, we saw Kono san and, Ni and Nitan being all loving towards each other. They were silly, they were like, really nice towards the other two. Um, and it was, and it also showed us how, you know, Haruto, once he sets his mind to something, no matter how small it is or how 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 unimportant it may seem to other people it really pushes to achieve his goal and it again it gives a bit more dimension to his character as to why he keeps on striving to be perfect when in fact he he has his own good points already so yeah um also for episode four for episode four i think this was my least favorite episode out of everything. Not to say that it's a bad episode. It's just that, um, I don't know. Like, I just felt sorry for Irene for, like, the entire episode with her not eating anything but pills. It sort of, make, sort of explains why she's evil. But, um, again, it gives characters a bit more dimension as to what they're doing, what they're doing. Unlike in Hanayori Dango, where um, the Sakurako arc there was just downright psychotic and crazy. Whereas this one, Iri has her motivations as to why she did what she did. I'm not saying that it's okay or it's good. It's just that it gives much more meaning as to why she was very protective and very um, obsessive over Haruto and what she feels for Haruto. Um, I love how they foreshadowed Megurin since the beginning of the series as compared to like in the manga where she just she was just introduced as here since episode one we have been seeing glimpses of Megurin. So when she was introduced we weren't surprised at all that apparently she's gonna be part of this crazy love square thing that's happening. Um episode five and episode six was painful for me to watch because of the whole, you know, Otto and Haruto are trying to figure out their feelings for each other in a way. But they, it was just, they have their own reservations to take note of. Like, Otto, she, she like, she wants Tenma to be happy. She, Tenma was her first love and it was they were engaged and so having feelings for someone else it sort of make, makes sense and I'm sure she she also doesn't know what she's actually feeling and then there there comes Haruto where you know he he wasn't stringing someone along he doesn't even know what these feelings are and then he, he gets told off that you know he shouldn't be stringing Megarin along and 
all of the feelings. I just, can I just say that I cried at the end of episode six because of how Harato cried. It was bizarre because reading the manga, it was there, but seeing him actually crying and seeing how Otto returned the pig thing to him, it made the scene much worse. And their acting is really good. I commend both Sugisaki Hana and um, Hirana Show for that scene. It was really nice. And it, 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 it also kind of made me sad how how they made it like when 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 Otto asked Benma if they if they should go out and Haruto was there that was mean just telling the writer that was mean that wasn't in the manga they made it much more painful for me to watch so there's that um now episode seven is when they deviated from the manga which I understood because around this time where everything is so confusing and um, it sort of become really lull in the manga so they deviated in a way to give um, Karoto's character another another side or another art to it because I think because of how we've been portraying Tenma so far it's understandable why a lot of people are in Team Tenma but for here um, we see that you know Haruto. Um, we we Haruto, who is so obsessed into living up with Domyoji's legacy, he finds out that during the time of F four, Ituku wasn't all that good. You know, a lot of people are bullying other people, um, but he did change, and he changed because of this other person, which is Chukushi, as we know, um, and. It made Haruto realize that you know he shouldn't be running away. He yes, he is pathetic. He's so afraid to be called pathetic before. He is so afraid of people calling him pathetic. He didn't want to be called pathetic, which is understandable. But then for episode eight, he ultimately finally acknowledged that yes, I. But the thing is, for episode eight, he finally acknowledged that yes, he is pathetic, but he's not running away anymore. He. It was like striving that to save the school, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be mean to other people, if you know what I mean. And it, it kind of makes much more sense that, you know, even if a lot of people did applaud him, there are a lot of people who really hate the decision because, as we know, a lot of people really like clinging on to people with power. And that was the same case with him. Like him giving up the whole peasant hunt thing, um, it shows that, you know, C5, it, it sort of gives that ideology that C5 has changed, that C5 is also vulnerable and stuff like that. And yeah, um, but I do think it's great development for the character to be doing that. Now, Episode 8 was crazy because I just watched it last night and I saw that a lot of people in Twitter weren't happy at all with where it was going because again, they have deviated from the manga, they have changed um, a lot of parts into it. But I, I and it's crazy because um, Otto and Kagurag decided to be friends um, and they were really doing a great job at, you know, becoming friends to the point that Megurin and Tenma were sort of like out of place in their double date once again. Um, but I, I am glad that they did shift that, that scene in the manga where Megurin goes into the shower and sort of like declares to Haruto that why could it be me or something. Because I think that one already happened in Hana Yoridango with Monk. With the, monkey girl if you remember that where she goes all naked she she tells him that he could claim her or something so in this one it's it's much more um it's much more it's it's much better in terms of of how the characters are um it's and it also shows that it doesn't it doesn't show that kagoragi isn't paying attention at Megarin at all because it was so focused with Otto. Um, it just shows that, you know, he is someone who knows how to recognize someone, if someone cares for him and that he's grateful. 
and at the same time, you know, he also sort of like values Otto in a way that he's willing to be the wingman for her to tend as parents. Um, it was just, it was, it was a really the ep episode eight is sort of like everybody growing because we can see Tenma looking so scared that because of how Haruto is to Otto, he's so scared that he 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 might lose her, which is um, in a way like if you're someone who's perfect, if you're someone who who like you you start he's starting to realize that he doesn't understand her at all, which. Um, gives us more room for each of the characters to grow, which I absolutely love. Um, and looking at the preview of episode 9, I don't get why a lot of people are so mad about episode 8, when in fact it just showed even more that um, these characters, it's not just you know one-way street in terms of who likes who, who's dating who, um, who's in love with who. It's more of like, again, them trying to be better people before they go into the whole romance part. So I think the pacing is just fine. I saw a lot of people complaining about how slow everything was, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think they're doing a brilliant job. I'm just, I'm not sure though, because I've seen that there are only like three episodes left or something like that, but um, I'm not sure how that would be possible. Maybe because they're also giving um, the manga some space because I think they've been catching up to the manga quite fast already. So I think they're giving the manga some space to probably this there there's gonna be like a partition also like with Hanayori Dango. So there's first one and the second one. So I don't know, but I can't wait to watch more episodes and basically there's that. Um, yeah, it's kind of like just weird to um, wait for subs. Like I have seen the episodes, I have understood some of it, but I couldn't really do subtitling also. Not that I understand everything in, in, in dialogue, so I'm not good enough to do that yet. But um, it is quite understandable, it's quite fresh to watch. And if you love Hane Yoridango, I absolutely think that you would love Hane no Chihare as well. Um, so yeah. Um, those are like my rambling thoughts on the whole thing. I just really wanted to like, sit down and talk about it. Um, I figured out before I'm just going to write a blog post about it, but it was too long and I was too busy and I figured that just talking about it makes it much easier. Most of my videos are just waffling and waffling about stuff, so might as well do one about this. Um, I know that it isn't exactly like a typical recap because I haven't really like did a rundown of most of the things that happened in the episodes though I did give out some spoilers but let's just generalize it and say that these are my thoughts in the eight episodes of Hanenochi Hare so far. So there's that. I'm gonna leave this video at that and yeah if you love the series and you watch this long into the video um tell me your thoughts or comments about it which team are you team how to look in Denma, whatever just get right into it please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video i'll be seeing you again soon